Hey, yo, it's Barty Strange, and you're listening to WRSU-FM, New Brunswick, the home of Rutgers Radio. Hello, Bartiz. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. My name is Chloe, and I'm actually a DJ at WRSU 88.7 FM, New Brunswick. And yeah. um, you are just released your new album on um, Live Forever featuring like 11 songs that are really awesome. And I'm really glad to get this opportunity to speak with you today. So I guess my first question was, what was the process like in developing your own sound and public persona? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, like I, I recorded this with my friends, you know, like we went um, to upstate New York and tracked it. And, um, you know, I've been working on a lot of the songs for years, like, you know, um, on and off. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of just hit a point where I was playing in a bunch of other bands and there were multiple people who were like, oh man, like you should think about starting a band of your own. And I was always kind of afraid to do it. And, uh, you know, my friends were just like, yo, like let's just record these songs and like see where we can go from there. And it was, you know, we put these songs together and we really liked them. And and that was kind of how it started. It was all pretty organic, I guess, like just, we just kind of felt like it was a good time to start doing my own thing. Yeah. I'm really glad that you did end up deciding to join, I mean, create your own band because um, I just really enjoyed listening to your music. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, your music is often considered uh, genre defying and like hard to pin down. So I was wondering like, how would you personally describe it? I would describe it, you know, I just, I like everything and I've, I kind of grew up playing everything. So I, I never wanted to tie myself down to one song. Um, and so I, I guess like people would say it's like genre defying, but I feel like it kind of like embraces everything and, mm-hmm. and kind of like finds a place for everything. Like it's all connected. And like I was telling people, I was like, you know, like there's something on the record for everyone. Like, you know, if you, if you like hip hop, if you like, like hardcore, if you like indie stuff, if you like country stuff, like there's there's stuff on the record for everyone to enjoy I think so yeah like I I hope it's like not genre defying as much as it is like genre like like connecting you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and then I guess for your album itself what was the inspiration behind calling it a live forever well I felt like when I wrote it I just had like a moment of like clarity personally where I just felt like this was the type of music I wanted to be making and I knew what I wanted to do with my art and it felt very like immovable. Like it felt like I felt very confident in it. And I was like, this is like going to live forever. Like making music this way and like being free is like the way that you can make something that is like immovable and honest and like actually like touches people. And I feel like that's like what, is important and powerful and great about music and that's what makes things like m- live beyond like the sounds like the, the way you make people feel like those things are like important and I felt like I wanted to make something that made people feel connected and could understand like what I was trying to say and you know it felt like something like that could live forever so yeah mm-hmm. That's really cool. And I know that I've read from your bio that you lived in Mustang, Oklahoma and like moved from like army base to base. I was wondering mm-hmm. kind of like how your childhood has like affected your music. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I just had like a lot of access to a lot of different music growing up. Like my, like moving from town to town, you just kind of pick up on what's happened where you're at. And for me, like I wanted to fit in everywhere I moved. So I would always like try to figure out what people were listening. I could. So I feel like to me, like having a broad palette, probably. Um, I mean, I remember like I'm a little older than you. So back in like the AOL instant messenger days, <laughs> like my friends overseas that I met when I was a kid, because I was born in England, were like sending me music. Like they were like, oh, you should check this out. Mm-hmm. this uh, it was things I'd never heard before like a lot of like house music like burial and like you know stuff like that that like really inspired me when I was in middle school and early in high school so you know I, I definitely think that moving around a lot just introduced me to a lot of different types of people and then therefore a lot of different types of music yeah 
what if any so you kind of speaked about this when you were talking about like the title of it but do you think that there's any other um like theme overarching theme for your album that you were trying to go for yeah like i feel like growing up i didn't have a lot of examples of like black people or people of color making like rock music or, or indie music and or you know the scene was like pretty homogenous and I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I always knew I wanted to make music, but I just didn't see anyone doing it that looked like me. And then when I saw like a couple of bands like TV on the radio and Block Party and um, at the drive-in and I was like, oh my God, like that's me. And I and I wanted to like make something that would inspire people. And, and, and you know, like, you know, there's people that live all over the country who like feel like they're the only one like them, like in their small town or even in their big city, you know, like, you know, they, there's a lot of ways to be different. And I just kind of wanted to show them like, yo, you can make whatever you want. Like you can do something, you know, if you, if you feel like you have something, you know, you probably do. And, you know, it's, you know, I just kind of wanted people to feel like they could, you know, try that stuff. Yeah, I definitely think that your music um, gives that opportunity for a lot of people to connect with it. Um, I was also wondering, like, how much of the music making process were you a part of for this album, uh, such as like lyrics, instrumentation, production? And can you kind of describe what your personal music making process is like? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I produced it all and I, me and my buddy engineered it and mixed it. So, you know, we like did everything. I wrote all the lyrics, of course, and played all the guitars and a lot of the bass and a lot of the synthesizer sounds. I have a band. Um, so my buddy Carter plays drums, my buddy Brian played a lot of bass, my buddy Graham played a lot of bass and synthesizers and pianos. Um, so, you know, we uh, a lot of people were on the record, but I was kind of the person that was producing it. Um, and the way I write songs is pretty like, I mean, I, I don't have like a music theory background and I, I don't really know how to read music or anything like that. Um, but I got a lot of mel I get a lot of melodies just from guitar playing I'm a guitar player first mm -hmm. I think and so I would like write loops and like chord arrangements and then just kind of sing to them um and I start start pretty small like with a guitar arrangement and I'm like and then I bring it to the band and see what they think um and then for songs like Kelly Rowland and Flage God like you know I just kind of made those beats um you know at my apartment and um I make a lot of beats a lot of house beats it's one of my favorite things to do so I you know it, that normally starts with just like a, a melody or like a really cool sound and then I kind of build around it mm -hmm. that's really incredible I couldn't even imagine it's like really interesting that you I guess you didn't grow up with a kind of like a traditional music background in that sense of like learning how to um, read the music right but I did hear that um maybe like your training in opera at a young age um has that influenced mm -hmm. any like any way that you go about music yeah I mean I'm definitely a singer so like I my mom's a singer my mom's an opera singer so I think I was always around singers and so I I knew how to use my voice and I sang in church growing up a lot and and so I was never I was always I always knew how to sing and um how to use my voice and my body to make nice sounds <laughs> so I you know I, I my mom like I attribute that to her but she was never a stickler she was never like practice every day or you know she didn't force it on us she just kind of you know we just did it because we liked it and she was very supportive so you know I, I feel like like music has always been like a really deep part of my life especially like singing specifically like you know since a very young age so I'm sure that has like a big impact on how I sing now like I, I still think like the vocal melody is you know the most important part of a song you know the vocal performance so mm -hmm. I try to focus on that mm -hmm. in terms of your album like what was your favorite song on the album and why i think flage god probably because <laughs> like i would just love to make more songs like that and the story in it is just a really personal story like i was just at a point in my life where i was just really trying to figure out what to do next and like musically and professionally and personally and it just when i hear that song it reminds me of like where i was i was in brussels at the time like just trying to figure out what i was going to do next and so uh, the flage is a neighborhood in brussels oh, okay. so it reminds me of that that place it's just like a 
really nice like it, it's just like it reminds me of a really special time in my life um and making that song so that one that one's pretty special to me and then another one is probably stone meadows because i it was really chum out um so yeah probably those two <laughs> And I read that you worked with producer Will Yip to produce this album. So I was wondering kind of like, how did you know about Yip? And like, um, why did you insist on collaborating with him? Yeah, well, he mastered the record. Um, we had already made it before we got to him. And we had been f trying to look for a record label to work with. When I had heard about me through my publicist, Jamie, and we sent him the record and he liked it. And I and Will, Will is like someone I've looked up to for years, like you know it's not a lot of people of color in the music industry that do what he does and i was just like completely flattered that he wanted to work with him he's awesome that's really cool and um was there anybody else specifically that you worked on for this album um i know you talked about your bandmates but like it was there any process in like combining everybody and getting everybody onto this project well not much of a process i was i just uh we tracked it at my friend's barn in Wasaic, New York, and we were just like, yeah, like, I just invited, like, 10 of my friends, and we were like, yo, let's go make a record. <laughs> that was pretty much it. <laughs> that sounds really uh, relaxed and really chill. <laughs> it was it was nice. It was special. So I guess I, I personally had a question on the production of Jealousy, your song, and I, I noticed that there was the bird sounds in the background, and I was wondering if you could speak towards them. Yeah, I mean, it was just, like, sounds outside of the apartment of the mix engineer like my buddy brian yeah we just like recorded outside <laughs> it was and there were a lot of birds chirping and we liked how it sounded and we just put it on the record it sounds really cool i really like that song i was also interested in the backup vocals for far and like who did you work with on this track for kind of getting that sound across yeah, that's my buddy Justin. Um, Justin, um, he Justin Foster. He he's a guy. He lives in Oregon now, but he's like an amazing vocalist, and he sings on on far, and he sings on ghostly. Um, the background vocals. Yeah, that's so cool. I know you recently released your music video for your song Boomer. Uh, what was the creative decision behind the set and the aesthetic? Well, Boomer, you know, I'm from Oklahoma and like the thing that people say in Oklahoma is Boomer, like Boomer, Sooner. It's like our like um, school chant. And so I wanted to kind of reference that. And um, that's why I'm wearing like all of the OU stuff. And I have like the, the red wall and all that because it's just kind of like I thought it was just kind of funny to make it super Oklahoma. -y. So that was just kind of what we did. Mm -hmm. That's funny. I actually wasn't sure if like what Boomer specifically referenced. So it's interesting to know that it referenced like your home. Yeah, mm -hmm. where I went to college. I know you also worked with a uh, director, Britton uh, Wayant and Drew Horan, I believe <laughs> on your music yeah. videos. And yeah. I was wondering like how you came into contact with them and what was it like working with them? Oh, it was really cool. I mean, it was funny to shoot those music videos because um, like the one that I shot with Drew, like I shot on my iPhone and I screen shared it on Zoom and he was on Zoom directing me through my iPhone. Wow. Like, yeah, because it was quarantine and it was like right at the beginning of quarantine and we were all afraid to be in the same room. So it took like all day and we just did it like just like that. It was really wild for Mustang. And then for Boomer, um, Britain just came over and shot it, which was really cool. But um, yeah, like we just wanted to do videos that kind of captured what was happening in our lives at the time. Like, you know, with quarantine and everything, we're like, yeah, like, let's just shoot it in our house. Like, there's no reason to make this any, we, we can't go anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of our thing. I'm interested to know that he actually directed you through Zoom. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty wild, yeah. I also saw on Twitter that you're contemplating which video to do next. Um, I was wondering, like, who do you plan to work with on that one? And do you have a question already? I have no idea. I haven't thought about it enough. I need to think more about it. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> do you usually have um, directors reach out to you or is it more you're reaching out to them? 
A little bit of both. I mean, now people are reaching out to me, but normally I just, I reach out to them. Yeah. I guess this is more of like a broader question, but it's something that you feel free to take it in whatever direction you wish. But I guess I was wondering, like, in what aspects have you felt that your race has kind of educated and influenced your music? Well, you know, there's just not a lot of Black people that I knew that were making rock music when I was, like, coming up. And so... I guess it's always kind of influenced me because I've always wondered like at what point we would have more influence in that space considering like how many contributions black people have made to rock music like it's and pop music and so I guess it's kind of always just been the backdrop of me making music it's like kind of like trying to reclaim our history like and being like yeah like Western music is largely founded upon like black music mm-hmm. and it's, it's a shame that there aren't more bl- bands that are black that are doing like really big things you know and I wanted to like b- make a project that could kind of force that conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah I think that's really something that you really stressed upon and I think that's something that comes across in your work. So awesome. Um, I was wondering um, also in what aspects have you felt your experiences like I know that you you're kind of like a working musician you work while also producing your music so I kind of was wondering how that really uh, functions and like how you juggle everything yeah I'm trying to figure that out every day it's hard I just kind of get what I can done I need a better task management system for sure Uh, that's like the next thing I'm gonna learn is like you know I have a good calendar but I think I need more than a calendar now I gotta like really (laughs) create a system for keeping everything on track because it's kind of hard um that's definitely the next thing that i'll be focusing on for sure Mm -hmm. who are some of your greatest musical inspirations right now um justin vernon vagabond japanese breakfast mitski tom mish james blake aaron desner um the national those are like a lot of the bands I, i like to listen to Wow, that's a really diverse array. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are there any like musical inspirations that like really growing up were something that you were listening to like all the time? I loved Erica Badu when I was a kid. <laughs> My dad used to listen to her a lot. Um, so Erica Badu, yeah, that's who I would say. Erica Badu is pretty big. She was like, she was the, probably the biggest artist in my in my house growing up. That's really cool. Yeah, she has great music. Yeah, she's great. <laughs> You have hit, you've kind of had like a history of like producing other albums for other artists. So I was wondering, like, how do you decide which projects you want to take on? I mean, you know, honestly, like I never, I haven't had much of a choice, you know, I, I, it's, I do it for my job. So I, if someone walks in the door and I have availability, I normally say, yeah, but now it looks like things are getting a little busier. So like, I don't know. I mean, I think what I'll do is you know, I I really like to connect to the music. You know, I I love working on things that I actually think that that the artist has like a clear vision for what they want to do with the music. Um, Those are the projects that I enjoy working on the most. Like I like, I like becoming like a part of the band for the project, you know, and Mm -hmm. that's kind of like really fun for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess to that point, like when you are working on someone else's album, do you kind of try to add your own spin to it or is it really you try to integrate part of the um, process i try to help them make the thing they want to make you know like i i feel like i don't try to put my stamp on it i just try to make them happy like you know and, and normally like people are coming to me because they like something i've done in the past so you know i try to bring my full self but i also try to just i try to make something that they're excited about first and foremost mm-hmm. and Have you noticed like kind of like the difference between producing someone else's album as opposed to like how you've been producing yours? Yeah, I think I obviously spend a lot more time on mine. (laughs) 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 But, you know, budgets are a concern, you know, I just try to, you know, people only have so much money and can only afford so much time and so many things. So I just try to make it as efficient as possible for them. Whereas for myself, you know, I just, I kind of, I'll stare at a song for two months if I want to, you know, it's kind of, I, I have infinity time to, to work on stuff. So it's all good. 
And I was wondering um, kind of how like quarantine has, if anything during quarantine has really like changed your process or revealed anything to you about like your music? Um, not really. I mean, I feel like I'm just, I'm writing a lot of new things. Like that's one reason why I'm, I'm in Maine right now, um, doing a lot of writing with band and just trying to get some ideas down. Um, Cause I feel like, you know, it'd be great if I could get another record recorded and uh, like pretty soon before tour starts again so I don't have to worry about it once I'm on the road so I'm uh just trying to get the next thing together and it's been uh it's been a lot of fun um but like very different you know it's harder to get people in the room to put together so it's a little more planning involved yeah yeah I know uh, you just mentioned touring um are you like excited to go back on tour and is there anything that you really want to do when you're on tour can't wait to go on tour I really want to go to Europe and play um that would be like a little milestone for me i've always wanted to go back to europe and play mm -hmm. that's so cool yeah and i was wondering if you have like anything in the works for the future like kind of what we can expect as uh, your fans <laughs> oh i mean i'm sure that i'll put out more stuff soon um i'm uh always writing so we'll see <laughs> i'm sure I'm, I'm i'm always like trying to get more stuff out so i'm sure i'll have something soon mm -hmm. um definitely writing a lot of stuff right now sounds good i don't have any other questions but if you would like to mention anything say anything that'd be really great um no you know i, I appreciate your time i'm glad that people like that that people like the album sounds good yeah thank you so much this is a really informative interview yeah thank you thanks for your time all right, talk soon. Bye.